Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to Northern Maine Productions and welcome to my front porch. Out here in my front porch as you can see I have a little workshop set up here. Uh, this is just a just an old sun porch as you can see. It's all closed in. Uh, nothing too spectacular. But anyways um, probably as most of you that watch my channel have noticed the majority of my videos that I have on here are video transfers um, what that means is a lot of my video footage is archived Bangor and Rustic Railroad footage from the 90's even the 80's and the early 2000's so I suppose some of you are probably wondering how in the world did I ever take a VHS tape like this and get it online? Well, I'm going to answer that question right now. Um, first thing you have to have is you have to have a capable computer, probably preferably a desktop computer. Now this machine here is not your generic e-machines that it was when it was built. This actually has an aftermarket motherboard in it. It's got a gigabyte <clears throat> G41MT, I believe it was. Um, this thing has uh, it's got an Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600 processor in it. Um, it has 8 gigabytes of Corsair XMS RAM. Uh, that runs its DDR3 RAM. Uh, it has a, just a basic DVD player in it for burning DVDs. And it has a 450 watt Corsair power supply in it. Uh, I built this machine a number of years ago. It's still running uh, Windows 7 as you can tell. Um, been a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of equipment. I think I first put this together in 2012 I believe and it's still running today um, this thing's got many many miles of internet browsing time on it and almost all of my videos that are on YouTube with the exception of the very first few uh, were done with this machine um, so how did I transfer the VHS tapes to video? Well, it was pretty simple. I used a product called Roxio VHS to DVD transfer. Uh, it comes as a box kit. Um, I bought this at Walmart a number of years ago. I think I paid it in the vicinity of about $85 for this, I believe. Um, I don't even remember if this came with I don't think that this came with this did not come with the composite cables I actually had to I actually had to purchase them separate separately but um, this will also do uh, analog sound transfers too. You can use uh, the the installed program is uh, Roxio Easy VHS to DVD, and also you it came with a sound editor program, so I can also transfer things like uh, old LPs or old cassette tapes, and I can plug them into this. This is the uh, adapter that came with that machine, or with that Roxio program. Uh, it's got a composite plug on it as you can see you just plug your composite cable in uh, If you're doing just audio you just use these two and that will allow you to use the uh, audio program and also it's got a S video input on it also and You just run these lines right directly from your VCR right to this little adapter Okay now I'm sorry that this is video is a little shaky and what we do to 
initiate the uh, transfer process as you open up this program uh, I'll put it up to full screen now you've got two options here you can record a DVD uh, directly off the tape or you can uh, record edit and save now typically this is the selection that I make now before you start recording you can go up here and you can click this and you can edit in whatever video name you want to edit which I'm not going to do right now because it doesn't matter um, anyways we're going to go over here I've got a this is a 1980s Panasonic black and white television set not much good for anything now but however it does still work very well with this uh, old VCRs now I suppose you're wondering why I would have a couple of VCRs here well there's a couple of different reasons if somebody brings me footage that they don't actually want to give to me and but they they are allowing me to use the footage or digitalize it I can pop the cassette in there and I actually have some blank tapes and I can and I can dub from one VCR to another I can record off in the master tape and make a copy of it which is pretty cool uh, another reason that I like to use two VCRs is for compatibility issues with cameras sometimes for whatever reason cameras one you know like a JVC camera that shot a VCR tape 30 years ago the tape that it produced may not absolutely be compatible with this Panasonic VCR um, but if I took that tape and put it into this JVC VCR very often it produces better results or vice versa you know if I had a a different an off a different brand camera that recorded uh, than either JVC or Panasonic generally one of these VCRs will produce better results than the other one will uh, it's never as a rule I think the Panasonic one overall wins as far as playback quality obviously it's quite a lot new it's a little bit newer VCR than the G JVC is both of these VCRs are also four head VCRs which is probably important too I don't even own a two head VCR I haven't had one for years and years um, I was trying to think I believe this JVC VCR was purchased around 2001 I bought that one brand new and I bought this Panasonic at a yard sale for six dollars I think that one was manufactured in 2006 so it's actually newer um, the JVC one has super quasi playback on it which I don't even understand but it was some kind of a high-end format I guess and the Panasonic one has Omnivision <laughs> which is probably similar but amazingly both these VCRs still work really well I only occasionally have to run a head cleaner through them another thing that I wanted to uh, sh uh, show you about this video transfer business is uh, obviously we're transferring VHS tapes to digital now most of the time we're going to see a videotape like this um, however later on these little cassette tapes showed up VHS C and there were others also there were actually a high 8 video format which is a little bit different than this uh, but in order to play you can play these VHS C cassettes in an adapter this is kind of a another prerequisite you have to have in doing this stuff this is a special adapter built 
to play these little VHSC cassette tapes in a full size VHS player. Uh, now if you were using if you have high 8 footage you would probably want to have your video camera that originally recorded the high 8 uh, that has uh, some sort of composite output on it that you could actually connect to your composite cables over here um, you know this is there was a lot of different formats back in the 2000s and early 2000s and through the mid 2000s and even in the 90s this is another option uh, to use with the Roxio video transfer pro program um, this is an old JVC camcorder this one uh, takes VHSC cassette uh, this camera has a composite output on it so you can actually send a signal right to a VCR or your other device uh, in this case this Roxio adapter and what you can do with this you can have a tape in this thing rolling and recording and you can put this camera on a tripod and record live and not only will it record to the tape that's inside of this camera it will also record to the Roxio program and it uh, will actually be writing video files directly to the hard drive in the computer which is a really cool feature because when you're done you'll have a tape archive and a video and a video file archive stored on your computer uh, I've tried this a few times with this camera this camera actually takes fairly decent footage uh, and if you take the the VCR transfer process out of it and record it directly to the hard drive it's almost as good as using a digital camera believe it or not uh, but anyways uh, that's just another cool little thing you can do so uh, now we'll move on um, but anyways enough about them uh, let's set this I'm gonna set this video in motion Right now we're using the JVC today. Uh, I'm gonna start hit the play, and as you can see, we got some train footage on the television screen. I'm gonna turn the volume down because this thing's pretty noisy. And over here on my computer screen, we have the same footage playing back. Now I know you're wondering why I use a television. Well, oftentimes I don't have my computer turned on and I'll be just watching the videotapes to see what's on them. But another thing that happens with this stupid thing is when you hit the stop button on the VCR and restart it, it often takes several seconds for it to start displaying on the computer screen which makes it very aggravating when you have to rewind or fast forward to search for something. So I just leave the, I just leave this little television here because it, it comes right on that instantly. But anyways, uh, to start recording to digital, we get down here, we get down at the very bottom of the screen here. Well, we actually changed scenes on this thing. Uh, if we get down here at the very bottom of the screen, there's a record button, and we just hit hit record, and we're now recording live. Um, that's all there is to it. That'll record for as long as you leave it recording. That is actually writing this file directly to a folder and putting it on the hard drive in that computer. If you wanted to, you could record with this thing for hours on end or until the hard drive was full on the computer um, okay that's enough 
I guess I don't need to record this any further. So when we want to stop, you look down here and it's, it actually tells you it's recording. When you want to stop, you click the stop button and then it switches and it says that it's finishing. Okay, uh, after it, you click that, you've got an option here, you can edit you can edit the video, you can edit edit out uh, the end or the beginning of it and I think you can even cut sections out of the center of it if you really want to but anyways uh, once you're done with that you go up here if you haven't named the video you can name it already which I don't need to do but once you've done all of that you can get down here and you can just hit the uh, this is the export button and you go up here and you have select you have uh, choices to make now you can either make a DVD you can save it to a, another device like an iPod or an iPod touch or an iPhone but I usually select computer you can select what quality you want I'm not going to select the highest quality because it just uses more and you can change what folder you want it to go to also which I'm not going to do anyways uh, we get down here and we hit export and this little uh, box pops up here and tells you that it's exporting and that's actually writing this as a video file um, in the in the Roxio capture well, I'm going to click this. So I'll show you, there's an option here to open the lo file location. So I'm going to open that file location. Uh, let's see here. It isn't where I actually thought it was. It's up here. It's in a folder called Easy VHS to DVD. And that's all there is to it. And then when when you want to view the video digitally, when you want to view it on your computer, you just open up that folder and you can find that video in there. And I sh might be able to do that right now. I don't know. Mm. Let's see here. too many videos named my video in here okay so it's not here let's save it here it is right here this is the actual digital version that we just recorded right there it was that simple it really, it's really pretty cool how this works so anyways that's all there is to it. Uh, when you're done recording, you click done. And you can go up here and exit out. It'll let, it'll ask if you really want to close this, and you can, I click yes. And that's all there is to it. Hope you guys learned something from this, and I enjoy bringing these videos to all my fans on here to show them to them. Well, my camera's going blurry on me. Ain't that wonderful? <laughs> Anyways, have a good afternoon. I'll be sure and get some more videos on here real soon.